this orchid is my Lepanthes telepagoniflora. It's one of the most alluring of the miniature orchids. Um, but also quite tricky to grow. I thought I'd do a video on it because, to be honest, when I bought it, I really didn't know if I was going to be able to get it um, to uh, grow fairly well. But I have done quite well with it, um, and so I thought it would be interesting to um, discuss what I've been doing. Now, I just got it from over here, where um, I put it a few weeks ago for the winter because this grows around 500 meters so it's fairly low altitude and is sort of warm growing really and in here the general conditions are intermediate so most of the time in the summer it's fine anywhere but in the winter it needs a bit more warmth so I've put it over conveniently on the side of um, a basket with a warm growing selogeny in it and that's where it's going to live for the next uh, few months and then the reason that it's a bit warmer, as you can see underneath this shelf, there's this heated um, pad which runs along and just provides a little bit of extra sort of warmth, um, just sort of coming up from here. Also, this is over the main sort of heating. There's some pipes there and down underneath these gratings are there some radiators which get heat from the central heating system of the house. Um, normally, it lives up here and I'll show you so for the summer I had it perched on the edge of uh, this pot next to the Panthes Caradictyon which is another very alluring miniature orchid to grow which I'll come on um, in a minute but up here in the summer it's on the shady side so it doesn't get any direct sun the conditions that it needs are shady humid but airy. So when I got it, I thought, well, I'll put it up here uh, where it can get um, plenty of air movement. And then when it's very warm, there's um, down on the ground, there's my fogger. So that sends sort of mist up and it sort of catches it here. So um, that sort of seems to keep it quite happy in the summer. Anyway, I'll take it down so that we can talk about it a bit more. So this is now on a piece of tree fern. Uh, I've had this plant for about two years and it was originally on a piece of small um, composite cork and it was um, beginning to deteriorate and the plant itself was very loosely attached so I took it off and put it on this piece of um, tree fern and this is from the sort of inner core of the tree fern where it's really quite hard and woody and you can see I've tied it on with some of this um, thin elastic and I've also been careful now and this has become sort of a routine of mine to put a date so I know uh, when I've repotted a plant or remounted it anyway so I put it on then and you can see it's got a bit of sort of small not too vigorous moss which was on the old mount and this bit of particular tree fern some of it is very woody and some of it has this sort of more fibrous and moisture retentive areas so that the plant itself can kind of sort of decide uh, where it wants to grow best. The flowers are huge for the size of the plant and the flowering stems will produce flowers successively from the end over a long period. You can see here or just about you can see there's an old flowering stem which is now completely finished and there's another one down here. Once you can be sure that the old flowering stems are completely brown and have died I just tidy them up by snipping them off. There is another one here. You have to be very careful that you don't uh, snip through something you shouldn't do. And there's one more there. Right, that's about it. So it's now got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six flowering shoots and another one developing there on a the young growth. So th they are really free flowering, it's absolutely amazing. This gets sprayed every morning with rainwater, um, about that much, enough to moisten the mount but not completely flood it. 
because the conditions that they like are moist and humid, but not continuously um, wet. So come the evening, this will more or less completely have dried off, but the moss, and this is where moss is very useful, the moss will still be nice and green and lush. And I find the moss a very good indicator that will tell you whether or not you've been keeping the whole plant um, moist enough. Once the moss begins to look a bit drier, you know that you haven't been giving it enough moisture or haven't been moistening it frequently enough. So the moss is very good from that point of view to show you what's going on. And then the other very beautiful and very alluring miniature orchid is Lepanthes caladictyon. Now this is an orchid which I have had a lot of trouble with um, in the past. This is now my um, the second time I've grown it. And I bought this in the um, spring this year, so I've had it for about nine months now. And it has grown very well. It was a tiny little plant, and I put that, in this case, on a piece of um, conventional uh, cork, uh, tied on with my usual thin elastic twine that you can get from dressmaking shops. Um, with and put a little bit of live moss on it. Not sphagnum moss, uh, which I find tends to go a bit soggy and deteriorate, but coming back to my point about live moss, it shows you um, whether, you're not, whether or not you're keeping your plant moist enough. And it has um, grown really well. You can see, there's a, even though it's um, winter, and I didn't really expect it to do much, it's got a nice, lovely new shoot coming here. Are there any more? No, not really. It's fair enough, it is um, coming into the winter. There's one here, oh, just behind here, that's um, been developing. And this can live um, up uh, where I've just um, got it down from all the year because the Panthes caladictyon comes from a much higher elevation range than Telepogoniflora, about 450 to 1500 metres. So this is classified as sort of warm to cool growing, so it's much more tolerant of temperature. So in a way, for me, it's much easier to grow. But the leaves are just so exquisite and then in the center you get these tiny little flowers. You can see that this is still really glistening with moisture from being sprayed this morning but this will more or less have dried off um, by late this afternoon and then in the winter if the heating is on a lot which lowers the humidity I will often come out in the evening and just give it a very quick fine misting but often that's not necessary, just a simple watering once every morning is enough. But I'm really pleased with this. In the past, I grew one on and off. Um, sometimes it did well, other times it didn't do so well. Um, but I've been very careful to keep it not too hot and dry in the summer and um, to make sure that I regularly spray it and make sure it never really dries out. They can tolerate drying out a little bit um, but they really hate it um, if they get um, dry for too long. All the leaves start curling up and dropping off because there's no moisture reserves at all in, in this sort of orchid. Anyway, so that's my two successes with Lepanthes. They are tricky to grow, uh, but the main points I think are to never let them dry out for very long at all um, and not to get them too hot in the summer. Now, one of the points that I did want to make was that miniature orchids, of which there are many, and you can get really carried away with collecting them, they're so sort of enticing. The only thing they have in common with each other, really, is their size. They cover a huge range of habitats in the wild and altitudes. So you have to really, and I've learned, you have to be very careful to learn what conditions each of them need, which is why I tend to have some of them up there, some of them down here, some of them I have mounted, a few of them I have in pots. So for example, this is Bulbophyllum polliculosum. And this, a couple of weeks ago, had leaves which turned yellow and dropped off because um, it's deciduous. There's very little information about this particular Bulbophyllum on the internet, but I just happened to come across a YouTube video about it and they had 
as soon as the leaves had dropped off, fairly obviously in fact, it's obviously going into its winter dormancy and that probably means in the wild it has a dry season. So I've taken it from it, all the summer it's been living up here and has been getting similar conditions, warm and moist, like all the other orchids. And I've hung it up so I can't absentmindedly water it. So this will not now get watered for um, the next few months. And then this is um, Sophronitis cernua, uh, which now would be called Cattleya cernua. Um, and coming back to what I was saying about finding within your growing environment the place that suits each individual orchid. This one really struggled with me for a long time until I read the um, journal article that um, the grower who was writing hung it right up near the apex of his greenhouse where it gets lots of light and lots of air. And I had had it sort of down here with some of the other things. And as soon as I hung it up where it got the light and the air, it started to do much better. And this is a fantastic orchid um, because the flowers last for over a month. So it's a tiny miniature orchid, but with these beautiful bright flowers that are presumably designed to attract hummingbirds as the main pollinator. And um, this, has, you can see the pseudo bulb that grew this year is larger than the one that grew the previous year. Um, so this is now doing much better than I ever used to do with it. Now, um, I'm sorry, I'm rather behind um, filming this. This one has been flowering for several weeks now. And as you can say, see, it's just coming to the end. But I wanted to include it. This is a plant of many names. Um, the name that I think a lot of people would know is Epidendrum porpax, um, but it has lots of other synonyms, so I'll put those um, in the video. And this is an orchid uh, which was given to me by another grower um, a couple of years ago. And it's an orchid that, from seeing photographs of it in books and magazines and on the internet, I thought, oh, I don't really, I'm not really very interested in that. But as uh, I was offered uh, a small piece of it, um, I thought, well, you know, I won't refuse. I'll have a go at it. And actually, it's an orchid, I think, that is more delightful in the flesh than it is in a photograph or on screen. The individual flowers are very beautiful and they last for weeks. Um, it's growing on, like the Lepanthes a few minutes ago, a piece of the sort of inner um, core of a tree fern, which is, you know, really quite hard and long lasting and woody. And it um, took to this uh, very well and has produced quite a bushy plant. Um, but interestingly, uh, the one that I'm keener on, and I bought this one this year, it hasn't had a chance to, um, I'll just put this one down. It hasn't had a chance to um, develop yet, but this is um, Epidendrum porpax alba which I think is far more beautiful still. It has these beautiful, tiny, greeny flowers. This one has produced two flowers on the same spike, and then there's some more coming. So it just, it's, for me, it's been flowering a bit later, I suppose about a month behind the more normal one. But when this has developed, I'm really looking forward to this. I think this will look really beautiful. Now, the other miniature orchid that I've been waiting uh, for it to come into flower properly to show you, is this. This is Phalaenopsis mirabilis. Mirabilis means uh, the wonderful, um, or m sort of miraculous, um, orchid. And um, I'm not quite sure who picked the name, but this couldn't be farther removed from the hybrid Phalaenopsis that you get in the supermarket or garden centre. This is an exquisite, tiny little species orchid. Um, I bought this earlier this year, in the, earlier in the summer. Um, I can't remember how it came, but I put it on this, uh, which is my favorite method of growing all my phalaenopsis, on a relatively long piece of cork, and tied it on with some 
uh, of this fine elasticated um, twine that you can get from a sort of dressmaking shop. And it has adhered to it. Um, I just, you can see there, I just added a little bit of sphagnum moss when I first put it on to give it a bit of um, moisture to tide it over. And it has produced a lovely root system all over the cork. Um, and I didn't know it was going to, but I noticed the little tiny little flower spikes developing a few months ago. And they've developed very slowly and they have just come out and I shall have to get some close-ups of this so that you can see it properly. The flowers, as you would expect, need to be observed really closely, but they're very beautiful. Um, and I just think it's just fantastic because it is, as I say, the opposite to the um, very blousy orchids that you get in garden centres and supermarkets. Um, I've got quite a lot of um, species phalaenopsis, so I really prefer the species to the hybrids um, because they're so varied. And the interesting thing is that whereas most phalaenopsis really need really warm conditions, by selecting those that come from higher um, ranges in the mountains, they've been evolved to grow in cooler conditions, um, which suits me better here because I really struggle with the warm growing um, phalaenopsis in the winter here. Anyway, um, thanks ever so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video and hope to see you in the next one.